Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be continuing with the inventory and item system where we're going to be uh, working on hotbars and picking up items in the world and so on and just building up on what we've got so far. In the last video we um, refactored a lot of the old code to be better basically. We made it, you know, less lines doing the same thing which is in most cases a good thing. Um, and well yeah in most cases and then um we also split up some of our codes so that for example the um code for the inventory slots on it's it's in one script but we've made a base class for item holders so that when we eventually make hot bars and uh, character armor holders they all use the same system and just slightly tweak it a bit because they're all very similar which is obviously when you make things that are similar but slightly different that's when you should use base classes and inheritance um and in the last video we ended off without it working because it's a long video just a lot of coding um and i left the you know hooking everything up in the inspector to this video obviously if you took the extra step and did it yourself then good job but i'm going to be covering a few things that you might want to tweak in the inspector now to make it all a bit better for us and then we'll get on about halfway through this video to doing the actual picking up with ray casting and clicking on the screen rather than the button that we've got so far. So I just want to start off by saying thank you to Paul Robinson and Phil Bourne for being uh, my $5 patrons. Um, well, on Patreon, obviously. Um, if anyone else wants to help support, then obviously the link is in the description. But apart from that, let's get into it. So um, this is where we left off. We had some code we'd redone still some comments in here to fill in which we're going to do right now um don't worry it's not another 40 minute coding thing like last video if you don't know what i'm about then obviously go back and watch my older videos to catch up to this point um unless you're here just to learn about you know how i do my inventory system from this point i don't know but it's up to you um one thing i did off camera well i did it and then you know i could have just changed it back for the video but it's easier just to mention it um under the slots we have the icons obviously which is just the picture which you see with the stack um for this we want to uh rename it from image to you know item icon or whatever which is what i did then press apply on the prefab so it's on all of them then if you search item icon you can select all of them with shift click um so click on the top one then shift click on the bottom and you've got them all selected then if you get rid of the search thing so you've still got them all selected as long as you don't click anywhere else you can then drag in the canvas to this item holder parent and the reason you do that is so that when we start dragging an item it sets the parent to the canvas which will put it at the bottom so basically it will render on top of every other part of ui and then um, when you let go it'll go back to where it was and it'll be fine so that when you drag an item here onto that one it'll render over the top and when you drag that one there it'll render over the top because there's no other way to go about doing that obviously everything has a place in render order so um you need to swap it around if you want one thing to go over one in one case and one over two over the other you know it's um whichever's lower on the hierarchy gets rendered on top because if it gets rendered afterwards it gets rendered on top like if you draw a picture then draw something else the second one goes on top if that wasn't obvious enough already anyway um so there's a few things we need to tweak one is in the code of our inventory script we want to change this from inventory to inventory slash new inventory or whatever you want it's so that in the item script um which is here we can have inventory slash item which basically in the menu when it's compiled when we make um, scriptable objects uh, it puts it in its own folder so it's neater so inventory new I uh, new inventory or item so I'll put an inventory and I'll call it uh, player inventory and it's this code we wrote last time uh, we give it 20 slots and boom so we got 20 list elements and each one has an item and a current stack uh, obviously null and zero by default now on our inventory handler script uh, we used to have a script on here sorry on this object uh, it's just the singleton uh, script that we wrote last time so we're going to add that on so inventory handler and all it stores on it is a current inventory which we're going to pass in the player inventory and the reason you have this is so that um, let's say you have a tutorial or some part of your game where you want to give them a specific inventory for it maybe it's a challenge or something like that you want to swap out the inventory um, you can have that inventory ready and you can change this variable in the code to be that new inventory and then you can change it back um, and obviously the benefit to doing that is you don't have to do an awkward like removing and adding items and storing them in a temporary place and putting them back you can just have them on their inventory and it's just a good system and then everything that needs to know about the player's inventory references the singleton and its current inventory rather than this uh, itself there's no point dragging this into other objects because the problem is if you then want to change um 
which inventory you're using, you would have to change it on every one. It would be a hassle, it would be a pain, it would be useless. Just do it this way on a singleton, store the current inventory and swap that out if you need to. Um, so now if we press play, we will probably still get errors, but I know which ones to expect, so don't worry. Uh, I know how to fix all these errors. So first of all, yeah, transform child out of bounds. That's because we're trying to get this panel. We don't care. Uh, I added that in last video because uh, I was thinking in terms of my game, you know, you press B to open bags or I to open inventory or whatever. But we don't actually have a panel to open and close yet, so we don't need to have the code for um, toggling the panel and freeing the cursor and whatever. So there we go, no errors, but there's problems such as, boom, error. Oh, we're not actually getting error when we do that anymore. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so basically, one problem is these are all, you know, x99, y, basically they're all default. We don't want that. We want to yet again select all the item icons. Um, Actually, no, we'll do it this way, okay? So we'll go into here, item icon, and we can just say, um, say it like inactive, and then press apply. Um, and for some reason that isn't applying it to the rest of them. Oh well, item icon, select all, boom. That's one way about it. Okay, so now when we press play, it's all empty. And when we try and add an item, it ain't gonna work because this button is not linked to anything anymore. So add item no function. So let's go to the inventory handler and add a function like um, public void um, add item button and it'll take in an item which is obviously the item we want to add and we'll say um, current inventory dot add item item. Now one problem is this add item function doesn't exist because in our item holder we have this as a private bool for some weird reason, so let's make it a public bool. And while we're here, uh, update slot, uh, update UI, we can say inventory handler dot instance dot update inventory UI. We've made that function now in the um, singleton. I don't know why that's there. Um, then we can add this here. There was a problem here last time. I just forgot. I missed out a line or an if statement. Basically. We're not actually checking if the slot's null, which we want to do. We want to only add to a slot if it's empty. So if uh, item slots i dot uh, item is equal to null, then we'll add it. We don't want to add to another slot because this this is the whole um, finding an empty slot, a new empty slot to add an item to. So that works. Now um, let's go back to this function on the inventory handler. So we add an item, then we want to update the UI. So update inventory UI. And currently, I don't think there's anything else to add to that. Um, we'll think about that. So nothing else in here. Item drag handler. Nothing else in here just yet. Uh, in here, nope. Um, slot UI. We don't need to do anything here. Inventory handler. Inventory slot UI. Okay. So the thing we need to know is when we start, when we press play, we actually want to clear our inventory at least for now until we add a saving and loading system. So at the bottom of our in item holder script, we'll add a public void reset all items and we'll just say for iron range um, item slots dot length we want to say item slots i dot clear which is the function we wrote uh, here we wrote it sets it to null and zero so we can loop and do that to every slot okay so we will now let that compile and one well let's see what we get now we get any problems so add item oh we need to actually link up the button i'm silly so add item drag in the inventory handler and find the inventory handler function for add item button and we'll add we'll just add a sword for now we can switch it in runtime it's fine so we'll press play we'll add and we'll switch and we'll say now we're adding uh, arrows they go up a lot and then maybe we'll start adding some health potions which stack up to five. That works now. But as you see, dragging ain't working. Why is that not working? Well, basically, um, <laughs> I did something silly, which I noticed when I re recorded this for the second time, is that I, I was I was wondering why it wasn't finding the right slot. And it's because on these actual slots, I am using the script item drag handler, which is the base class. But we actually made the uh, inventory drag handler, which we want instead. So actually go onto your thing, remove um, well, what I'll do is, because I'm not sure this prefab thing is all working. I don't like the old prefab system. I should start doing my tutorials on the new system, at least when it comes onto the live build rather than the beta build. Unless it already is, I'm not sure. Um, 
but we'll search for item icon again and select all of them. We will delete the item drag handler and we'll add on the inventory drag handler, which is the one that knows basically what to do for inventory ones differently to the rest. Um, and we'll say, make sure you've got them all selected still, close, and then drag in the canvas again to the parent. There we go. So now let's press play and hope for the best. So add item. Okay, um, ooh, one problem there is we wrote the clear function, remember, but we didn't call it which is a problem <laughs> that I guess happens quite a bit. You know, you make functions and you forget to call them. So what we'll say is when we um, start, we'll just um, current inventory dot clear or dot reset all items. I actually want to call it clear all items because that's technically what we're doing. Um, item holder clear all items. All right, let's have another go. And this time we should be able to add items and stack like we were. It should have cleared the inventory when we start adding. And we should be able to drag items around. Ooh, okay. Uh, we're getting there, but it's not completely promising just yet. Because we are dragging the item. Let me just, um, for the sake of it, add some other items in as well. Ooh, that was odd. Oh, okay. Uh, never mind. So it was working. <laughs> it was just not calling. When I released and let go, we weren't updating the UI. So if I go to the drag, drag handler. Oh, sorry. No, it's the slot UI because that's where we drop them onto. So slot UI. Update UI. We need to do inventory uh, handler dot instance dot update the UI. So basically, yeah, it was swapping the items there, but we weren't updating the UI. But then when we add a new item, we call update UI. So obviously I forgot to do it then. Um, and it just looked a bit weird. But now it should work. So add item, drag and drop, move it around. And if we start adding health, health potions, it adds into the right place. We can swap around. We can swap items. And it's all working. There we go. OK. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, this is all working like it was. If anyone's noticed anything that wasn't, that isn't working, that used to be, then just say. But you know, we can do all this fancy stuff, um, and it all works fine. Anyway, so that's nice. Now we can start doing the picking up items bit, which is the main part of this video. Um, so, and we're about halfway through, so I was right with time. What we need to do is we need to add um, an item with a script on that when we click it, we can check if it's got a um, particular script and if it does call the function to pick it up. So what we'll do is we'll just write an interactable script. So interact, interactable, like so. So in our interactable script, we want, um, let's, let's call it interactable, yeah. So we'll have a, um, for now, we'll just have a public virtual void interact and that's because we might have different interactable things in the future and then what we'll do is we will close this and we're going to have an interactable um, item so like that we pick up so um, what we need to do is we need to create C -top script uh, item interactable if it actually opens the script so this inherits from interactable object oh interactable there we go um, and this stores a public item so you know the item it is and um, yeah, we'll just go. With, we'll just go with adding one at a time for now, and then we can add stack. We can add stacks later and sort that out later. So public override void interact, and we can say um, for. Well, actually, no, we don't have a quantity. We don't have loop. We just want to add it. So we'll say um, bool has picked up is equal to an inventory handler dot instance dot current inventory dot add item item so we're going to basically try and add the item on this object to the thing and if um, so I could just shove this code into the if here but I think it's nicer to have that has picked up 
So if not has picked up, then um, debug.log, um, I don't know, your bags are full. We'll, we'll add a proper thing to handle with this later. Um, and then return, I guess. And then we can say um, else. I mean, we don't need an else because it's after return, but we'll say um, destroy game object. So basically, if we actually do manage to pick it up and our inventory, it does go into it, then we'll get rid of the item in the world. So now we want to say, let's put it into 3D. Um, our canvas, what we'll do is we'll take the inventory panel now. Obviously, that's going to look weird. So let's just scale it down and let's put it at the top right, I guess. Um, and for the sake of this, we'll just create a cube in the world. Don't know where the hell this cube is, but let's go to it. That seems fine, actually. Um, let me just take the camera, put the game view here, and move this cube. Take the camera and just tilt it a bit. All right, there's the item we want to add, okay? Um, let's just put this back, actually. So I want to click on this, and we want this to have its own item. So let's click on cube and add. Um, it's an item interactable, and it has the item basic sword, okay? Um, now we need a way to click on it to call that function trigger so uh what we need to do is we need to basically say um we need to add a script to our camera for picking up items now this is just going to be a pretty simple script we'll just say um i don't know camera um interact i mean this bit is just kind of temporary like this is going to work but obviously as i do anyway i'm going to make stuff work then go back and make it better and as we add more systems it'll make sense why we do that so camera interact what we want to do we want to say uh private void update we want to do a raycast so i want to say uh i want to say raycast hit um is that what I'm doing? I've kind of just mind blanked. I did a Raycast video uh, recently. So in the player camera, which this would be the player's camera if we actually um, did, like if, if this was a player walking around in the scene, then this would be the player's camera, but we're just doing it on the overview camera. It's fine. So we'll say if physics dot Raycast, um, and we're gonna say the Raycast is um, transform dot position, so the camera's position, um, to, ooh, how are we going to do this? We want to do it uh, where we click to. So um, do you remember, if you guys have watched my channel, I recently did a Raycast video um, where we would like be in the scene and we would click on an enemy and it would draw a Raycast between the screen and that enemy. And then if it hits the enemy, it would try and get the component and basically kill it. So what we want to do is we want to actually not do a physics raycast like normal. Well, it's a physics raycast, but not like this. We basically want to say uh, if input dot get mouse button down, because that's what's going to actually like trigger it. If you know what I mean, when we left click, it's going to do it. We'll say ray. So we'll store ray, which is screen. Um, no, actually we need reference to the camera. So what we'll say is we'll say, um, camera, we'll say uh, private camera is equal to, well, we'll call it, um, I usually just go for screen camera depending on what it is, then in the start we can say screen camera is equal to get component camera because we're on the camera so we can just grab it off here and then we'll say uh, screen camera dot screen point array which I explained in my video. Basically, it converts um, where we click on the screen in our uh, with our mouse position. We'll convert that into a raycast or into a ray. And then with this, uh, we also want to store a raycast hit, which is basically just uh, an object which stores data on what the raycast hits. Quite simply. So we'll say if 
uh, physics dot ray cast and we're going to pass in the ray we've already made um, out hit now if you've watched my video you'll understand what that means basically once we've done this function it gets some data back and it'll put it into this hit object this hit uh, variable here and then we also then have to say how far we want it to fire so we're just going to do mathf.infinity uh, which is just a representation of infinity though if you wanted a specific range on your pickup which you obviously will in a game most likely then just put this to you know the world units of however far you want it to go and then basically yeah um if we hit something this will get called in here so we can then say um if hit dot um collider dot get component and we called it item interactable well actually we can just say interactable so if we click on an interactable object we then just want to do the uh, interact function Okay, no, actually, sorry. When I say if it has the component, then we'll do hit dot collider dot get component interactable um, dot interact. I can't type dot interact. There we go. Um, so yeah, basically, we're gonna say every frame. Have we pressed the mouse button down? Yes. Then do this. No, don't. So we pressed it. All right, we're gonna store. Um, we're gonna find where we clicked on the screen and store that in a ray variable um, which is basically just letting this know where to do the ray cast and then we're going to have this ready to store um, we just have to basically store it we have to give it an empty variable to store to and it outputs it here so whatever data this function gives back goes into here and then we can say if the collider we got um, so the collider is obviously just the box collider um, or the object sorry the game object that we collided with it actually returns a collider but if you do get component on collider it just gets component on that game object it's the same thing um, you could say collider.gameobject.getComponent, but it does the same thing. Um, so if it's, oh, sorry, if that is does not equal null, then interact. So, fingers crossed, what should happen is I should click on the box and it should add a sword to my inventory. So, if that, if I've done it all right, uh, then that should work and we'll be done. So, click, boom, got the sword in our inventory now. And obviously you can just add more items, so like for example I could just duplicate the cube, make it a bit smaller, push it to the side, or to the to the side. And this one could be giving me a health potion, okay? So if this item had a health potion on it, then we can say health potion, sword, boom, boom, done. Okay, there's the video done. Uh, obviously I'm going to continue the series. Uh, leave suggestions in the comments below. I hope you're all happy with how it's going and obviously yeah, give suggestions. I want to know what videos to make. You can suggest what to carry on doing in the series, uh, what to cover, or just what to cover in general in Unity. That's uh, what I prefer, just any Unity video ideas. Um, obviously if, if you haven't already, uh, like, comment, subscribe, it'd mean a lot. Uh, and also join the Discord server, links in the description. Uh, but apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.